Hey, what's up, Internet? So today we're going to be looking at configuring DMVPN with IBGP as our routing protocol for getting across the DMVPN cloud. So there's nothing entirely impressive about using BGP outside of the fact that it scales really well. Cisco recommends using EIGRP or BGP as your routing protocol on the, in the DMVPN cloud for scalability reasons. Um, so with that, uh, we'll configure that really quick. We'll take a look at some of the caveats and I'll talk a little bit about design considerations. If you look at the hub, I drew this little network behind it. Um, you know, just design considerations for when you have a larger network behind the hub. But first we'll get DMVPN, uh, or get BGP set up with DMVPN. Um, you can see right now DMVPN is already set up. I can ping my spokes, 16, 10, and 10. 20, 30, and then as an example, we'll go to spoke one. You can ping, or ping spoke three, and you'll see that we get a dynamic neighbor come up in our NHRP or our DMVPN table. So we'll get BGP configured. We'll start on the spokes because I'm going to, I'm going to use a different method than you might be used to for configuring the hub using BGP. Um, dynamic neighbors and that scales really really well and it allows you to only have to use a static BGP neighbor statement on the spokes. We'll start on the spokes we'll say router BGP and I'm actually gonna turn on um, IP BGP new to get the new community format just for future labs. So we'll say router BGP our neighbor we're gonna use the actual tunnel IP 172.16 10.1, remote AS, 65,000, because IBGP plays best in the DMVPN arena. We'll say neighbor, 172.16.10.1, we'll do send communities both, just, you know, I'm going to tinker with communities, and, and I might have a future lab about BGP communities, and some interesting stuff you can do with DMVPN. So say network, 172.17, this is the loopback. As a mask of 255, 255, 255, and that'll be configuring spoke one. We'll pop that in. Looks, oh, typo. There we go. And the only difference is on spoke two and three is we're going to change the network statement to spoke two. Spoke three. There you go. BGP set up on the spoke. That was easy enough. Then on the hub router, we're going to use dynamic neighbors, which is a really cool feature that allows us to form BGP neighborships based on a peer group without having to use any actual neighbor statements specifying who those neighbors are. We learn them as they implies dynamically. So to do that, we're going to do neighbor DMVPN. And we're going to call that as a peer group. Neighbor DMVPN. We'll send communities both on that one also. Neighbor DMVPN. You should set your spokes as route reflector clients. I'm going to show you why first, though. So I won't put that in just yet. All right. And then for dynamic neighbors, we're going to do BGP listen. We'll say the range that we're going to listen for neighbors on is 172.16.10.0. You use CIDR notation here, so that's slash 24. It'll ask for a peer group. The peer group is when we just created. That was DMVPN. Oh, I know what I was missing there. Neighbor DMVPN remote AS 65,000. And we'll advertise the loopback that the hub is sending out. You can see our little drawing here, loopbacks are 172.17xx, where x is our router identifier. All right, that should be good for the hub, except for uh, the configuration of route reflector. We'll see our dynamic neighbors sort of pop up here in just a second. Yep, you see... Spoke one, spoke two, spoke three, and it gives you a little asterisk right there 
showing that those are dynamic neighbors. If you need further proof that they're dynamic, you can do show IP BGP summary. You can see BGP peer group listening on the range of 172.16.10.0. We do the total dynamically created neighbors, three out of a hundred, hundred the max. That's a configurable option, by the way. You can see router BGP 65,000. BGP listen limits 5,000. Now, if you show IP BGP summary, I've got three out of a 5,000 max dynamic neighbors. And again, you see their neighbor tables right here. We're not learning any prefixes yet. We'll just give BGP a moment. There we go. We have our prefixes in on the hub. So I can do show IP route BGP. And I got our, my BGP routes in there to hit the loopbacks of R1, or spoke one, two, and three. But because this is IBGP, we don't advertise IBGP learned routes between IBGP peers. To prove that, I can use show IP BGP summary, and I've only learned one prefix from the hub, and that's to reach its own loopback. The loopbacks to reach spoke two and three are not there. So to fix that, we'll go back and write our BGP 65,000. We'll configure our peer group DMVPN. We'll say that all members of DMVPN are route reflector clients. We'll have a quick resync there. All right. And there we go. Now we have uh, BGP entries for spoke two and three's loopbacks. You can see they make it into the routing table. And again, because this is IBGP, you'll note that the next hop values are not changed. Perfect for DMVPN phase two. Phase three is not as important because in DMVPN phase three, we have an NHRP redirect packet that can be sent out from the hub that'll um, dynamically update Ceph on your routers so that if your paths, you know, if the, if the next hop was pointed to the hub for all these routes, the hub would send that NHRP redirect out and the routing table wouldn't change, but your Ceph table would. And once the update was in the Ceph table, you could then build those dynamic tunnels all the same, which is awesome for the for sake of summarization within DMVPN. Something we'll probably look at in the next blog post I do on DMVPN is the phase three coolness. But we can do some quick test pings, 172, 17, 30 to 30. Source, loop back zero. Looks like we don't have a dynamic tunnel to two yet, so that'll be a great test. We'll ping the loop back of spoke two. And now we have a dynamic tunnel built to spoke to, and that's setting up BGP for your DMVPN cloud. Again, it's incredibly easy to set up, um, maybe slightly more complex than your IGPs, but um, totally worth the work just because of how scalable it is. And the magic that reduces the amount of configuration on the hub, again, is this dynamic neighbor feature configured with BGP listen range and call in a peer group. And you can configure up to 5,000 dynamic BGP neighbors. The last thing I want to talk about is just some design considerations for DMVPN. If your HQ, hub, router, whatever has a larger network behind it, you are going to have to take into account that if this is a BGP network behind your hub router, you're going to run into issues where the hub router is not going to update next hop info for your spokes, so your spokes won't actually know how to reach the networks that the hub is advertising to. And since the spokes are configured as route reflector clients, you can't do next hop self because that can potentially cause a routing loop. Um, you, you're welcome to try and set them as next hop self, but you'll note that it never actually takes effect. BGP is too smart for you. So if you try and enable next hop self on route reflector clients, the route reflector clients never receive the actual update to the next hop. Um, so if you're going to try and cheat and get around that, you could use a route map and have the route map uh, match prefixes that the hub's advertising outside of the DMVPN cloud. That's something I've done in the past, and you could force the next hop. So a route map like that would look like, we'll call it bad design, but it does work. 
So you have your first one where you could match prefixes inside of DMVPN and do the first entry in this would match prefixes inside of DMVPN and you just wouldn't have any set commands on that. And then your next one could be matching a prefix like match IP address prefix and call it a local HQ. And then you can do set IP next hop. 172.16.10.1. It throws a warning up, but it will actually let you apply that to your neighbors to update next hop. Uh, even better is if you have a larger BGP network behind the hub and it's all IBGP back on that end, is just carefully use network statements to get that next hop reachability into the DMVPN cloud. So that's configuring IBGP within DMVPN to have a scalable solution for DMVPN routing. I hope this was informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.